Hey, I know I talk about harmony all the time and how you can internalize harmony and how important it is to be able to play the changes, but I'm making a whole separate series about rhythm because actually a couple things, rhythm is probably one of the most underestimated mm, characteristics of, a, of what it is to be a great musician. And this is, I know is true from classical conductors that I work with and from playing classical chamber music, but it's definitely as important and in a different way, in a groove kind of way, when you're talking about music beyond classical. Now, I think that one of the keys to rhythm, to having better rhythm, and I'm gonna cover this in a few different ways, but in this video, I'm gonna cover it this way. One of the keys to rhythm is the bow. And um, so I've got a few different things I can share with you about the bow. I'm gonna share one of them now, and I wanna make sure that you know about some of the the uh, um, the videos I've done before this about extended rhythmic techniques and then the follow-up to that. So this is really kind of a follow-up to those videos which will be linked around here. So today what I'm going to talk about is improvising the bow. Improvising your bow strokes or improvising your bowing patterns so that when you're improvising music you can have control of the bow. So this seems counterintuitive to what we learned as classical musicians because as classical musicians, we're always given bowings. We prepare specific bowings. So it feels like this crazy shift. And what I see a lot of times is that when, um, when classical string players, when they see music, even if it doesn't have a bowing written, they'll just play it as if the bowing is written. So there's no bowings, they'll just go down, up, down, up. But that's kind of insane. Um, so some of the tips I shared in the the video before this about uh, jazz violin bowing strategies. Some of the tips, first I, I talked about the importance of subdividing the bow and subdividing any rhythm. So for example, um, mm. I gave that exercise, I give that example on the melody from Spain. And the idea is that you wanna make sure that you're moving down, up, down, up on all the subdivisions with your bow as a way to internalize the rhythm. But after that, if you're going at faster speeds, what you really wanna do is optimize the bowings so that you're not changing so much. <laughs> because the more you change, the more it gets in the way of playing fast, because every time you move the bow, every time you change the bow, there's all this friction, there's resistance, right? So we wanna basically wanna do more slurs, we wanna do more hooks, and we want to, um, and we wanna not lift the bow off the string. Ultimately, when we play faster, we wanna do those things, which is totally contrary to what we learn in classical music. Because in classical music, we learn from a very young age, and just playing a string instrument, we learn from a young age, for good reason, to use lots of bows so that we can make a big sound. But the reason for part of the reason of that is that when you're playing in front of an orchestra, you want to be able to be heard as a soloist in front of that orchestra in a large hall. But the thing is, that doesn't really matter in a lot of situations where you're improvising music, because you might be improvising in a small room, you might be playing solo, you might be playing duo, trio, or you might be amplified. In any of those cases, the need to be loud is is not as important. And you can still have a, a core sound, like a strong sound um, come, like, you know, this core, this core sense of like strong sound that comes, but not be playing forte all the time, not using huge bow. And what I would argue is that the reason you want to not use tons of bow, unless it's comfortable for you to do so, is that rhythm is more important. You wanna have energy to focus on rhythm. <laughs> and when you're improvising, you wanna have energy to give towards improvising good ideas. And so as soon as we make this shift and we decide we're gonna leave the bow on the string, we're not gonna change the bow as often. And what was the other thing? Uh, basically, we're gonna play at a lower dynamic and use hooks and slurs. This is, this is totally a different mindset, but um, I'm gonna do more videos on that, but what I wanna focus on now is how you can start to take control of the bow by just improvising your bow stroke. So I'll give you a few examples. 
So let's say that we just have a very simple line like, um, like this. That line. What I want to do is just take that line, or any line, and I want to practice it with as many variations of bow strokes as I can, focusing on controlling the dynamics. So the way I like to focus on it is, can I make a flat sound? Can I make a totally smooth transition no matter what bowing is happening? Because that's me taking control of the bow. That to me, bow control is about you control the bow, the bow doesn't control you. So everybody knows that when you go down bow, you naturally create a diminuendo. When you go up bow, you naturally create a crescendo. So we wanna constantly be working against that. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is to find every variation through improvisation. So I'll take this line. I just focus on playing very smooth and you can slow it way down if you want. I'll give you another example. Let's take a pattern and you can consolidate this exercise with a harmonic internalization exercise and with, you know, left hand building. So let's take a different, let's take a, I'm gonna take B flat major and I'll just do a simple pattern going down, you know. You can speed this up as much as you want. We'll go the other way. Right? Uh, you can take a different pattern. Let's take a different pattern and I'll do I'll do a I'll do it fast this time. I'll do it in C major, something like this. So no matter what tempo, no matter what the pattern is, it could even be, let's say it's like a, like a fiddle tune or a jazz melody. It almost doesn't matter. Any kind of melody, any kind of pattern, any kind of exercise where you're just practicing improvising the bow. It's powerful. It'll change the way because as you're playing, you're going to have to think about making it even. And that's going to force you to develop that control over the bow. Um, and uh, I think that's it for this video, but check out the rest in this series and definitely go back to the ones um, that I mentioned before about rhythmic extended techniques and about jazz violin bowing techniques and look for the one that comes after this, which is I think is gonna be good as well. Now these videos, as you may or may not know, if you're in my Creative Strings Academy, you see some of the ones that are on YouTube, but you also get a bunch of other videos. If you're interested in going deeper into some of this stuff, check out the Creative Strings Academy. It's a place where you can even connect with me one-to-one. -one. You can take an introductory lesson for me with me for free. You can check that out in the link. Love to stay in touch. Thanks a lot for checking out these videos.